Orlando's 11-year-old Julian Newman has found out firsthand the power of the internet. Julian Newman, they are taking the internet by storm with their incredible dribbling skills. 17-year-old Julian, he's been playing varsity basketball since the fifth, fifth grade. grade. Unbelievable. That is unreal. Julian is already thinking college ball. He said he wants to play for John Calipari and the defending champion Kentucky Wildcats and wants to be like the Clippers Chris Paul one day. Basketball means a lot to me because I want to one day play the NBA and Oh, my God, it's Remember around a decade ago those viral videos on the internet we saw of this little kid putting on a show with the basketball? Julian Newman was thrusted to the top of the basketball world and was projected to be the next big thing in the NBA when he was just 11 years old. But fast forward more than 10 years later, it all seems to have gone down the drain as Julian Newman hasn't even made it to the NBA. In fact, he hasn't come close. But what exactly happened? How did he go from the most talked about to almost forgotten? Well, the answer to that question may just shock you. Why was Julian Newman an internet celebrity as a kid anyway? See, to understand how he got there, we have to understand how it all started. At the tender age of just three, Julian Newman was already getting familiar with the game of basketball. He grew up in a basketball-loving family as his father also played, although he didn't go pro in the NBA. Under the intense training of his father, Jamie, Newman's dedication became evident as he routinely shot 100 free throws, 200 floaters, and 200 jump shots daily. You've got to teach him young, right? The spotlight found him in 2012 for his viral highlight videos on YouTube as a fifth grader, when he played varsity basketball for Downey Christian School. His extraordinary skills sparked both admiration and criticism, creating a polarized view of his potential. Some touted him as a child prodigy and a very good prospect, and others, well, criticized the way he was marketed at a very young age. After initially attending public schools, Newman transferred to Downey Christian School, a small private school in Orlando, Florida, after his father began coaching basketball and teaching history at the school. In his early years, Newman's success was undeniable. As an 11-year-old 4'5 point guard, he led Downey Christian to a 21-6 record, averaging 12.4 points, 11 assists, and 4.3 steals per game through his first three starts, earning attention from major media outlets. As a fifth grader, he initially began playing basketball for the middle school team, but after seeing immediate success, scoring as many as 91 points in a game, he was promoted to the varsity team. Yeah, 91 points. Entering middle school, Newman's stats continued to dazzle. Averaging 17 points per game in 6th grade, a highlight video of Newman posted to YouTube by recruiting website Scouts Focus went viral during this period, receiving over 3.5 million views. He soon began making national headlines, including in Sports Illustrated and the New York Times for being a 5th grader playing varsity basketball. He even made television appearances on popular shows like Steve Harvey, The Ellen DeGeneres Show, Good Morning America, and other programs. He was also invited to perform at halftime during an Orlando Magic NBA game. The hype reached new heights as he scored 52 points in a headline-grabbing matchup with top recruit Kyrie Walker. His highlight video from the game received over 13 million views on YouTube. He was dubbed the best 6th grade basketball player you've ever seen by the Huffington Post. Newman's seventh grade season saw him labeled as the most marketed 12-year-old basketball player globally. He finished with impressive averages of 19.8 points, 10.2 assists, and 4.3 rebounds per game. As a seventh grader in 2015, Newman became the youngest player to reach 1,000 career varsity points, and he was certainly living up to the hype. His promising rise continued in 8th grade, where he averaged 23.9 points, 11.4 assists, and 3.6 rebounds, solidifying his status as a high school basketball phenomenon. But the efforts to market Newman's career were criticized by some media outlets, who compared him to a child star. But the efforts were certainly gaining attention with millions of views on his videos. 20. 
Newman is also the nation's all-time three-points leader, 1,178, and the nation's all-time assists leader, 2,211. But here's where the tide began to shift for Julian Newman. See, despite the accolades, the hype around him began to wane, with major ranking platforms overlooking him for the class of 2020. While he maintained impressive individual stats in high school, the hype that surrounded him during his earlier years had diminished, and Newman would soon find out that it takes more than just viral YouTube highlights to get into the NBA. As Newman's high school career concluded, college was definitely supposed to be his next chapter, but his dreams of college basketball or making it to the NBA just stopped. I mean, how did a promising talent go under the rug just like that? But here's the thing. The reasons behind his lack of offers and his decision to bypass college for overseas play were clouded in uncertainty. There were claims by his father that Newman had 15 D1 offers, but Newman himself has described it differently. He also revealed that the boy wanted to play overseas in either Germany, China, Italy, the G League, or Australia so that he could prepare himself for the NBA draft. But aside from the fact that the plan was for him to skip college, Height, shot creation, competition, performance, and attitude emerged as critical factors contributing to his downfall. Standing at 5 feet 5 inches to 5 feet 7 inches tall, you could tell that Newman is a short player and that he would inevitably face challenges due to his height. Critics argued that his stature would make him a target for taller and more physical players, impacting his performance in higher-level competitions. You might point to the fact that he is small as his limitation, but he's also unathletic. We've seen small players like Nate Robinson at 5'9 dunk with eats and blocked shots with eats, but Newman can't jump like that. Newman's playing style, characterized by contested deep threes and questionable shot selection, drew criticism lots of it. He takes the most horrible shots while he's playing. He ball hogs his way to making these awful contested deep three-point shots and contested mid-range shots. He plays for the camera, obviously, and never takes any good shots, which puts his team in difficult situations most times. That brand of basketball is nice on the streets, but won't land you anywhere near an actual NBA contract. The talents are there, no doubt, but his other quote-unquote strength his dribbling isn't even a strength. He shows off complex dribble moves, but if you notice, he never creates any space. You could say he's more of a Harlem Globetrotter than an NBA prospect. While he's five feet past the three-point line, you'll notice he can't really get by his man with any basic moves when he plays good competition. This is because he's slow and unathletic, as well as having small strides. In college and NBA, the fewer dribbles you take to beat your man, the better player you will be. That's the name of the game in the NBA with guys like Steph and Kyrie being such great handlers because of the few dribbles they need to catch their man slipping. Newman couldn't even score in high school with simple moves, let alone being able to do it at the collegiate level. He could also struggle to make shots at the rim because of his small height and he has been shown getting blocked when he goes there. His jump shot is very, I mean, weird. He starts his form from his chest and has questionable release. His dad has stood by him and encouraged him to take these shots, which is not great either. Julian Newman's struggles against top-tier competition raised doubts about his readiness for the next level. If you saw the game against IMG Academy, he was shut down even when IMG weren't even giving it their all, not to mention that his team looked levels better when Newman was off the court versus when he was on it. The same happened against Spire. Julian Newman got owned by LaMelo Ball, and he wasn't even trying. He didn't even consider him a threat, and Ball was just laughing all through the game. Against top competition, Newman didn't perform to standard. And if you can't perform at high school, there's no way you're getting a shot in the NBA. There's also the issue of Newman's on-court antics, including starting fights and creating drama, reflected negatively on his character. Coaches, players, and analysts called him out for it. In high school, more storylines started to prevail about his shady attitude. Remember when he threw a chair at a player during the IMG game? <laughs> a major brawl broke out afterwards between Little Julian and the IMG Giants. From what we can see, iPhones were flapping about everywhere, and we even saw Julian pick up and chuck a chair at one of IMG's players. Or when he got in a fight in practice? 
I mean, Julian acts like he's the top dog when in reality he's not. His attitude alone would scare away college scouts and potential suitors. As of now, Julian Newman resides in Las Vegas, away from the basketball spotlight. Despite a lack of recent competitive play, he remains active on social media, teasing the launch of a YouTube channel and a one-on-one -on -one show titled Beat Julian Newman. Mark Cuban's offer for a shot in the G League remains a potential opportunity for Newman to revive his basketball aspirations. While his path to professional basketball remains uncertain, Newman expresses a determination to pursue his dream. His involvement in his family's clothing company, Brand Prodigy, and various sponsorship deals provide alternative income streams. While his story is all centered around a monumental decline in the realm of sports, we'll always remember Julian Newman as that one kid back in the day that had quite the journey as a child prodigy. I mean, I can still go back and watch those flashy highlights of him as an 11 and 12 year old and be entertained. But drop your thoughts and opinions on Julian Newman. Was there ever a time you actually thought this kid would become the next best thing? Or were you never sold on the hype?